My dog used to be white. She likes to roll in the dirt. Uh, <laughs> okay, time for bath. Uh, my wife's gonna wash the dog. I'm gonna get some tomato plants. Um, if you're uh, from one of my other groups in that, and uh, you're wondering about the gardening videos, I've been doing that for a year. I'm into hydroponic gardening. Yeah, I do videos on that, so if you're interested, check it out. If not, don't be afraid, hop off, and I'll catch you next time. Uh, my gardening peeps, I'm going to get some tomatoes. I'm going to show you how to do a cracky container with it. I've been getting questions about other vegetables, and you know I mainly do leafy greens. Uh, but we're going to give tomatoes a try. So check that out. And if you're wondering about it, if you start seeing other content on this channel, um, I'm going to be doing other things. It's fantastic little things, and I want you guys to follow me along and join me. If you're interested in gardening and you kind of like what I've been doing, this other stuff's going to be even better than that. Kiki. Kiki. Daddy going to get you. Daddy going to get you. What do you want? Who is it? Who is it? What? What? Good treat. Uh, look at these we got at the store. These are called heartbreaker tomatoes. They're supposed to look like little hearts. Never done them before, but we've already got a bunch of tomatoes and they're only six bucks. So, with these things ripen up, we got three of them here. That's about $18. Probably got about $18 worth of tomatoes in here if these all ripen up and uh, we don't get any more, but. We're going to go ahead and plant these. I'm going to try something with them because I looked them up. The Heartbreaker tomato, they come in determinate and indeterminate. And if y'all can look at other videos and that, but a, a determinate variety grows like a bush and an indeterminate grows like a vine. And that's the ones you see where they, they cut off all the suckers and then and, and use just one or two vines and grow these really tall. So uh, I thought I could look it up and, and determine which one it was, but uh, I can and the little description that came with them didn't tell me, so it could be either one. If anybody really knows, you know, shoot me a comment and tell me. But uh, see like that right there. See there's a sucker growing off of that. So if this was indeterminate, you'd want to go in and pinch all these suckers off. But we're gonna try a little experiment. We bought three of them. One we're gonna plant traditional in the ground, see how it goes. And then we're gonna plant one in the hydroponics. I gotta clean that up. But you see how these guys are going already? Our collards and kale, and basil, everybody's got some good growth. And I stuck one or two tomatoes. These are just cherry tomatoes, just to get them going in here. But we're gonna put one in here. That guy's really far along so I'm gonna plant him right here because his roots are gonna grow like crazy and it'll block this thing up in about a month or two with so many roots and what's gonna happen is his roots will grow down here and I don't have this glued on I'll be able to pop that off and trim off his roots and you know if it gets to be clogged up it's right here before I've made the mistake of like sticking a tomato here and then forgetting about it and this thing gets huge and you get tomatoes off of it and all of a sudden your your system gets blocked up because the root mass just fills that up so i'm going to plant one here and see how he does and i'm going to plant one in a i'm going to try and find another container or just pull these collars and kale see i've got some more got collars all over the place and kale see this kale see that's your baby greens you can keep trimming these off and eating those so I might switch that out and make that one tomato or try to find my other container. So quick update real quick, show you how everything's growing. Tomatoes are sprouting up. Look at this guy back here. He's just taking off already. A couple of weeks. So it looks like these guys are doing just about as good as the ones in the traditional hydroponics see with my hand about how big they are but sooner or later with the stagnant water these guys their growth will get a little stunted they will only get so big in this container 
but the regular hydroponics here they'll get a lot bigger and this basil will just grow like a bush you have to actually keep trimming this and trimming the roots or it'll clog it up but you see we've been harvesting uh, all of our lettuce there's not too much left so a couple more meals and then I'm gonna plant that out with more pak choy I did that one in the soil so y'all can see how that goes too so all kinds of stuff going on as my amaranth growing so like I said guys put these in the container let's feel that that thing's still full haven't done anything to it and these guys just keep on growing so uh, you know if you plant these in the ground you either have to have irrigation going on a timer or you have to get out here and water it I haven't touched this thing in about three weeks and they're all still alive so that's why I like using the system see I just, it's really is set it and forget it so all right just a quick update and Pepe tagged me on the Q&A with uh, what all the other gardeners are doing so next week I'll do a little Q&A and then tag some more gardeners it sounds like fun so right quick mint update things growing like crazy look at the leaves on here so and this just did it's reaching a uh, about one month and the water level went down about there so I just filled it up to about here no nutrients or anything and when these guys start looking a little yellow or peakish like they need a little more I'll put some more nutrients in it but for right now I just gave them a little bit more water so one month added about a gallon of water to it and, and that's it and these things are just taking I know it's kind of like a weed you can plant it somewhere and it'll grow in your yard but some of them won't have real small leaves it'll be kind of scraggly but this guy's looking pretty healthy all right we'll just get in most of the soil off like i said this is going in the traditional hydroponics which we have a pump so if you didn't get don't get most of that off any big chunks and all that this stuff will clog your pump up and you have to you know turn it off and try to clean it out it can even hurt your pump so that's why I like the crack key method is because we don't have to worry about stuff like this at this point you could take that and put in a crack key container and you're all done you don't have to worry about it but um, I'm gonna get the hose and spray that off a little and try to get most of that off so we got most of it cleaned off there's still little bits I could sit here all day and try and get them out but hopefully the roots will hold on to most of that if it didn't come out in the spray so I got it kind of clean my little pull insert and we're not going to need this little piece here in the middle because the root is already big see when you're doing the little microgreens that hole's too big for the microgreens but see that's just about the right size now this guy we're just transplanting him so I'm not going to cut or anything because it's going to go in a shock so later I'll come in and see all these probably trim that up and prune it because we won't need all of those they left this kind of bushy but uh, I'm going to cut some of those bottom ones off later. But for right now, this is how easy it is. Okay, right in there like that. I'm going to squeeze him right down into the hydroponics. He said he might live, he might not, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see how he does. We're just going to let him sit like that for a little while. And uh, they'll all straighten himself up and that and start growing. And what's going to happen if that bush is out, we're going to remove these. You know, we'll, probably in a couple of weeks, these guys will be ready to eat. So we'll just pull those out and then leave those empty and let him just grow over the front of this. And hopefully he'll do good. If not, we'll have some green tomatoes do this inside because it started raining outside drizzling that out. it's got a little tote I think this is just a 10 gallon tote what we're going to do is kind of plant that tomato in here 
what you do is get one of these hole saws. Now this one's got an interchangeable bit. This one I can take off. It's like my two inch. And then I can take it off and put the three inch on there. But there's a reason why I'm doing both of these. And I put the tomato right there in the middle. You see that three inch one? Now this might be different if you get a neck cap. These come in different sizes. It depends on how big that lip is. So I found one where this one fits pretty good. And if I took our pull noodle, just put the tomato in there. The tomato is going to grow really big and heavy. You could do it with just a pull noodle. You're just going to have to cut it a little bigger so that it doesn't slip in and cut that hole a little smaller so it wedges in really tight. But I like using these when I grow a big plant that's going to have a big root system. Since that tomato's already got an established root system on it, I can't just cram it all in there. You know, you could probably trim it and get it in there, but I like to leave as much of the roots intact when I'm transplanting it so I don't put it, really put it in a shock. But these things, really easy, the bottom comes off of it. Let's just do that. And what we're going to do is, Put him in there and watch how easy this is. This was uh, three dollars at the um, Dollar General. Walmart, I think it's a little more expensive, but get you a piece like that, a little hacksaw blade. Just that easy, just like butter. And what we do is just cut this. Is then you have the hole where the established plant can fit through there. Sometimes if it's really tight, cut a little bit off. And I close that hole up a little bit. And that fits really nice. It's that easy. So that ends up costing about two cents. That I think was about a quarter. But that's going to go right in the center. Now you're going to be tempted and go, wow, there's space here and here and here and I can put five plants. Um, but you want a larger container. Tomatoes are going to drink a lot of water. And they last a long time. Lettuce, you know, it's going to grow a couple of weeks. You're going to eat it, get rid of it, start over. Um, you can put a couple more. Uh, Dr. Cracky, who does the Cracky method, um, said that it takes about a gallon of nutrient solution per head of lettuce. So if you have five of them up here and it's 10 gallons, you're going to have more than enough for that lettuce. This tomato is going to drink water. If you want it to last, it's going to drink and drink and drink. So. Um, unless you want to be out here every couple days checking the nutrient level and refilling it and then you get into the problem of how much nutrients your plant drank used up and how much more you should add and keeping everything in balance I don't like doing all of that I'm trying to do things really simple so I put one plant and I put enough nutrient solution in here it's gonna last a long time so I'm gonna put just one tomato plant there and I'm not gonna drill holes everywhere what I am gonna do is drill a two inch hole over here so that I can peek inside and I'll do that right now because I already got the two inch bit on there that way I don't have to change it back and forth and instead of coming in here to check the nutrient solution and with your plane on top and trying to lift it up and look and I have a little peephole here that I can look add water if I want to so you'll see other people have done all different things but this is just the way that I do it so now when you use one of these, if you watched other videos, you'll know, but if this is your first time, when this saw blade, those teeth hit this plastic, because see, you're drilling a pilot hole first, so what happens, you're, you're pushing on that, pi on that drill bit, your pilot hole, when it pops through there, it comes up here, and then those teeth grab on, and your drill, if you're drilling fast, will twist your wrist right off. So what I do, or if you're holding it really tight, when that bites, it'll tear the plastic up and possibly crack it. So you gotta drill in reverse. And that might happen because you drill in a reverse so your chuck keeps loosening up. That way you don't hurt yourself. This pool noodle, one dollar at the Dollar General. Now you guys might go to Walmart. I think I've seen it for like three dollars. 
but these inserts, I cut about 48 of them out of one, so it comes out to about two cents a piece. And if you're going with $3, you're talking about six cents or something, but at any rate, they're less than a dime a piece. And uh, I'm just gonna cut one like this. Great. See how easy that is? I see that's bigger than that 200 hole. Cut it. Cut another little piece. And if I was using this as an insert, that's the piece that I would take and put right in there. And when you close up your plant, you still have a little room. You might have to trim that piece a little bit more. But that way your little transplants, you know, that'll hold it in there. If you have like the, your microgreens and you try to put it in there, it'll just fall out. So if you trim this guy up a little, come back in there. That's what you see in me. See those little holes? That's where your microgreens can go in there and you won't squash them. So it's just that easy. Now I'm just going to do that. And then that's going to keep the rain from going in. You know, a little bit might go in, but you know, it's, it's just going to drizzle in. You just don't want it overflowing. And when I need to check the nutrient level, instead of coming in here and doing like that, I'm just going to come in here, peek, and then I can add to it. See, I wasn't pushing down really hard, that way I didn't go. If you go boom like that, then your drill, you might end up doing, because it's so deep crack and all of that so take your time dump this mess in here too just do that so that does a nice little job there boom all right that's it that's simple let's go stick a tomato in here all right let me just show you guys it's about 10 gallons here this is how little nutrient you use when you go to buy it and you're thinking, oh, it's kind of expensive for one pound or two pounds. That 10 gallon container, and I'm only going to fill it up. You know, once we put it in, you'll see the roots where it hangs down. But this is all we put in it. I've got about 20 grams. That's the master blend tomato formula. 20 grams calcium nitrate. And. 10 grams of Epsom salt that you just get at the drugstore. But the salt you put in it, what I usually do, got a little trash in there, let it start dissolving a little bit. the water all agitated. If it's all settling in the bottom, you might want to mix it up a little. Same deal as before. Just rinse it off in your little pot. I do it in this so that I can save some of that soil. Then I'll dump that out and then that way I don't waste all of that, you know, whole quart of garden potting soil. But rinse it off. And like I said, since this is cracking method and we don't have any pumps or anything to get stuck, um, nothing to clog up, you know, it's just a static system like that. And you don't have to worry about getting everything off. That's fine just like that. What we're going to do is just pop our container on. Got this in a nice sunny spot. And I'm not real worried about the location. It's a new place. I'm not sure how good it'll do here. And I may have to move it if this gets down low because it's a dark container that thing I heat up really fast in the Sun so that's why you saw one I painted white so we might end up having to paint that white or put some insulation around it or or something but I'm gonna check the temperature of that as the uh, season goes on here but for right now when it's up about this high and it's only in the 70s right now low 80s this isn't going to heat up all that fast because I'm only getting about two hours of sun and then it's going to get shade. So, right now, let's check this out. Let's see if you can see. 
No, we do. Right there, you got a couple of little leaves. Put that right around there. Squeeze all of those guys in through there. Really, guys, it is that easy. See, now I can feel with the weight of this plant. If I just use that pull insert and tossed it on there, it would not hold it up. And you can use hydrogen, and that's how I started. And most of us hydroponic growers started with hydrogen in that. But this comes out a whole lot cheaper. And when you're done, that's easier to rinse out. Hydrogen will get all in the roots. You have to sit there and pull them apart, try to dry it out, clean your hydrogen. It's, it's a lot of work. You can see how simple that is. That thing was two cents. If you want to get rid of it and not mess with it, get rid of it. Get another one. Drop his roots in. So we already know his roots are touching. But this thing's so big, you won't want just those roots. Some of these roots you want to be in there. So I see that this is you know, right about there. It's going to end up coming in there. So drop him in. See if he's nice and happy. And what we'll do is. Because see all the tomatoes, this thing's already got. It was staked up when I got it. So, all right, guys, I lied. When I moved, I thought I brought my tomato cages, but I left them all at the old place. So, I'm gonna have to go get one. But for the time being, you saw the pictures. These were already staked up. I just took the stakes that were in there and just stuck them in that little noodle for right now. Just holding them up. So, kind of let him go. So that, like I said, he's in shock right now. He's getting a little bit of sun. Um, he's got a nutrient solution, so I'm going to let him go for a couple days. If it doesn't get too windy, you can see it's not blowing around too much. It's kind of died down a little right now, and the sun's come out, so hopefully it's not too windy. I'm going to run up to the store. Like I said, I just get a small tomato cage, flip it upside down, bend down the spikes so you're not gouging your eyes, and put it on top of there. If it gets to where it's wanting to flop over, drill a couple of holes and zip tie it to the top here. Make sure you zip tie it to the whole container so you won't need to get in there because you'll be able to see in there. If you just zip tie it to the top, it might flop over and pop that top off. For the time being, let's let him go. That's number one, cracky. Number two, got to clean up. My wife has, see that one's staked up too. Stuck over there, see how he does. And number three, he's actually in the shade over here. Let me lift you up. It's been there for a couple of hours and she's not all wilted up or anything. Oh, look at that. Make sure you don't bring like caterpillar eggs and stuff home with you. But uh, he's been there a couple of hours. His leaves aren't wilted and it's going to get a little sun in about an hour here. But he looks like he's happy for now. Alright, I'm going to check him in a couple of weeks. Maybe those tomatoes are ripening up. Maybe we'll get a lot more. So, y'all keep on growing. If you're interested in gardening and you kind of like what I've been doing, this other stuff's going to be even better than that. So uh, stick with me if you see other kind of content popping up on my channel. Don't be confused. Uh, the gardening stuff, I'm not just going by the wayside. Um, I'm always going to be around if you got questions. Email, uh, keep on growing. Without the G, keep on growing. Uh, one at gmail.com. Any questions that you got? ask me uh, all of the information that I have in my head uh, about this stuff I'm not an expert I've kind of given you over the whole year so there's really nothing new I can give you it's just putting a new spin on, on an old thing if that makes any sense and I want to bring you guys value every time uh, you get on I'm kind of to the point where I've experimented and I've, I've done things I've taken different things from biotensive farming and and Dr. Cracky and, and Larry Hall's Gutter Gardening and stuff like that and made something for myself that works for me. And I'm enjoying it and I don't see myself evolving or doing anything else because it's working. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, um, I can keep shooting videos in that, but I'll just keep showing you the same stuff over and over just in a different way. And I don't want to do that to you. And you guys just fall by the wayside because you're not feeling like you're getting any value out of it. Um, if we've connected, emailed, direct message, uh, commented in that back and forth over the year, uh, 
and we made a connection. I don't want to lose you guys because you're getting bored. Uh, when I make a friend, I want them, I want you guys to hang around forever. So, you know, I'm, I'm not just saying that. So, you can see some other stuff. That's my motto. Just like my channels are called Keep On Growing. It's not just the gardening. It's my whole life. You know, I want you guys to feel that way too. That we're all going to grow together. We've got fantastic things on the way. Um, I still answer questions about all the gardening stuff. But when you see other things getting homogenized together with this, uh, I'm not going crazy. There's a method to my madness. And I want to take you guys along with me. So, have fun. Whoa. Sorry about that. Have fun. Enjoy the show. And get ready for a wild ride. Keep on growing. Oh wait, if you're a new content creator, I'm supposed to end it like this. Wow.